Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. Just doing a quick uh, ministry update. Uh, I've been doing some uh, house setting. I've been trying to still get out some videos here and there, Bible studies, while doing some house setting in the neighborhood. And uh, I got volunteered to watch the neighbor's dog. So it's a, it's a young pup. Uh, so I did a study. I had the paperwork here and did a study. And, I, and I'm still going to put out that study, but there were some interruptions. The dog likes to whine a lot. So it's, it's probably going to be a week after this before I could get anything else out. But I want to do a, a touch on a few things from ministry update. Um, prayer requests. Uh, we're going to be doing a prayer request for this month video eventually. But right now, the I just want to say thank you for your prayers. Uh, God answering prayers. I want to do a testimony of God answering prayers. I was sending some Bibles overseas. And they reached the brother and sister in Christ overseas. Praise the Lord. And that's a prayer, you know, answered prayer with everything that's going on out there, brothers and sisters of Christ, that we can still, the doors are still open and God's still helping us and answering prayers. So praise the Lord that the Bibles received, the people who needed those Bibles re received them and got them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like I said, I got studies, I got studies I want to do, but I've been busy lately, so please forgive me, brothers and sisters of Christ, for not putting out a lot of videos recently. Um, been trying to get a video out every week is my goal at for right now. But normally I like to get out videos when God puts them on your heart. And I've got studies that God has put them on my heart. And still working on them. But um, sometimes uh, things get in the way. And I apologize for that, Brother Sis Christ. Uh, so I will get a video out today. I'm going to go ahead and put it out. But please forgive me in that video. There's a couple interruptions. Mainly from the dog. Uh, and then there's times I forget to unplug the phone. And you get... I get a lot of, uh, what do you call it, um, spam callers. People trying to call and try to scam me out of money and everything because I have a landline instead of a cell phone. So they're still trying to go after people with landlines left and right. Um, so there's that. So I just wanted to do a little update to say this is what the ministry, we're still going to go hardcore. This is the Word of God, the King James Bible. We're still, I'm still trying to push you, brothers and Christ, to stay in this every day, to pray every day. Okay, to make sure you're taking this and hiding it in your heart and you're living it. To make sure that no matter what's going on in the world, if people uh, like want to fall away and start looking at the world and they're looking for the time of Jacob's trouble and that's what their eyes are on is the time of Jacob's trouble and you've tried your best to reach them with the Word of God, not feelings and opinions, but with the Word of God. The Bible says we're not supposed to be looking for, that, for the time of Jacob's trouble. We're supposed to be looking for that blessed hope the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. That's where our eyes are on. That's what our motivation is for living, is to be caught up at that point. We're looking for that blessed hope, present tense. It could happen any day now. We're supposed to be looking for it every day. And there are brethren that are falling away. And they're taking their eyes off of the blessed hope. They don't want the blessed hope. In fact, the Bible says the, to them that love his appearing. Remember, love is an action. If you love His appearing, you're going to be preparing yourself for Jesus to come back any day now. That's what it means to love His appearing. Right? There's brethren that have turned their back on it. They don't love His appearing. They don't want God coming back right now. They're putting Him off for years. Oh, well, He ain't coming back for three, four. Do your best to witness to Him for the Word of God. But if they say, no, I'm going to keep my eyes on the, on the time of Jacob's trouble, then you've got to go bye-bye Seriously, you guys say bye-bye. My eyes are going to stay on Jesus Christ. This is going to be my foundation in all matters of faith and practice, not the world. Hold on, sorry, you, bye-bye. You, bye. In these last days, brother says Christ, it's going to get lonely. And it's going to get hard. But you've got to be able to say bye. Okay, the Bible says, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. Time and time again, if someone who once taught truth, you can have someone who's truly saved, a great man of God that once taught truth, turn and go the way of the world. He does, you guys say bye-bye. Why? Because a man that isn't a heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Okay? Bye-bye. You turn your back on the end of return of Jesus Christ, bye-bye. And I'm telling you right now, you still fellowship or support anybody that's turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, guess what's going to happen? You're going to wind up turning your back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. You're gonna, they're going to get you to take your eyes off Jesus Christ. 
That's why we're not supposed to fellowship with the lost world. That's why you're supposed to treat a saved person as they're lost as far as you put them out of your fellowship. Why do you put them out? Because the Bible knows what will happen if you bring them back in. And they have heresies. They have uh, sinful issues, flesh issues. When you invite them back in, it's going to spread. And it's going to start messing everybody in the fellowship up. That's why you put them out until they repent and get their heart right with the Lord. Then you can invite them back in. And that's how it's supposed to work. But today we're taught, oh, we can all agree to disagree. And it's okay to have everybody disagreeing. That starts up arguments and then debates and then fighting and then division. A sword, like a, I don't have a sword in my hand, like a sword dividing. That's okay, it's okay. No, it isn't. Once again, I keep quoting from Scripture, but like I said, the men that are causing the division, they, they're starting to show their hate for the Scriptures in these last days. Scripture says, okay, that we're all, Paul says, we're all supposed to be in the same mind and of the same judgment, striving together. We're all supposed to be on the same page. There is no, no agreeing to disagree in the Bible. That teaching is nowhere in Scripture. Nowhere. Okay? People have to add to the Word of God and subtract from the Word of God to try to push in this teaching that as brothers and sisters in Christ, that's a, that's a teaching of Satan. We can agree to disagree. That's a total teaching of Satan. Right? Now here's the thing. I've said this before. There's a difference between having a theory. If I come and say, I don't know, here's my theory. The Bible doesn't really tell us because it's not for us. It's not important for us to know. Like the 24 elders, the Bible is not crystal clear on who the 24 elders are. Why? Because we'll find out when we get up to heaven, brothers and Christ, the Bible's not crystal clear on it. All we know is that the people in heaven, every tongue, every kindred, every nation, that includes Jews to Gentiles to Samaritans, everyone. We know that there's every race up there. So the 24 elders can be any of those races, those kindreds, those tongues. We know that much. But the point is, is when someone says, I have a theory, it's not that we agree to disagree, it's just that I don't know. I can't say this is absolute truth. And if someone has a different theory than I have, they can't sit there and say, this, my theory is absolute truth. Some have gotten very prideful, very proud, and it went from being a theory to absolute truth. Well, what changed? Nothing. I just say it's truth, therefore it's truth. Uh, no, 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 no. Be careful, brother, says Christ. Don't become like that. Don't ever become like that. If the Bible's not crystal clear on something, don't turn around and try to play God and say it's absolute truth. I right. had a brother in Christ, don't want to go off too much, but I had a brother in Christ had a different theory on the 24 elders than I did. And when it was a theory, yeah, he's got his theory, I got my theory, we're still all on the same page, we're all the same mind, the same judgment, it's just a theory, the Bible doesn't explain who the 24 elders are exactly. Okay, it's just a theory, he's got his theory, I got my theory, we're still fighting for what matters. This right here is absolute truth, keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ, his imminent return, and living for the Lord. What happened? The guy got so proud and so prideful, it went from being just a theory to it's absolute truth. Well, have you found, have, has God showed you anything new in here to add to your theory, to make it go from a theory to absolute truth? Oh, no, 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 it's just the same thing, it's the same theory, it's the same theory. Very prideful, right? But there's this Christ, you can have theories on things that's not our, our dispensation, okay? When we go up to heaven, we'll be there, absolutely, but it's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble, and we're not going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble, so there's not going to be everything. God's let us know some things. He showed John a lot of things that's going to happen, but he did it in a way so John could understand. But there's still a lot of revelation that we look and go, I don't get that, I don't get that, I don't explain, I don't know exactly how that could happen. Okay, well, it's not our dispensation. Okay, it's not our dispensation. We're not, gonna, we're not supposed to have the answer for everything in every dispensation. This dispensation is the number one dispensation. From the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ that we need to know the most about and God's shown us the most about. This dispensation, our dispensation. The body of Christ, the church of God. Okay. We can have theories. Okay, I think this or I think that, but it's just a theory. This is what I think. 
Have you ever heard a preacher say that? It's a good preacher when he goes, this is what the Word of God says, and then when it goes to a theory, he'll go, this is what I think. From my reading the Word of God, this is what I think. That's a good teacher that'll say, oh yeah, there's a difference here. Okay, I'm letting you know there's a difference. The Bible's not crystal clear on this, but through my studies and through my life experiences, you know, maybe this is what, what's really what's going on. Okay? That's a good teacher when they can distinguish between the two. When this is a theory versus me teaching the Bible says. A lot of people have theories and they're saying the Bible says when it's a theory. The Bible's not saying it. The man is saying it. Make sure you can distinguish between the two brothers and sisters in Christ. Be very, very careful. Okay? But we're all supposed to be on the same page according to Paul. This is the final authority. This is the final authority. We get in this teaching, I go off a little bit on stuff like, you know, um, the Godhead versus the Trinity. This is the final authority. You can always tell when a man has put in this first, or when a man is put in the world first, or the flesh first. Because you go chapter first and capital C, Christmas is a holy day. Oh, it's not in there. But you choose, hol uh, you choose a day that's not a holy day that doesn't exist over fellowship with the brethren. You're putting the flesh first. You're not putting God's word first. You're putting the flesh first. And I've proven that time and time again. Christmas is just a flesh, study, a flesh day. It's a day about elevating mankind and elevating the flesh. It's not about lifting Jesus up. It's about tearing him down and lifting you up. All the practices of Christmas don't line up with Scripture at all. At all. And I'll bring that up. One of the things that God showed me that I thought was pretty amazing, and the Christmas lovers, their, their lowercase g God of Christmas, the Christmas lovers, they couldn't handle it. And I pointed, because they won't respond to it, I pointed out that you do realize Jesus never got any gifts on his birthday. So why are we giving gifts? He never got any gifts on his birthday. Do you realize Jesus never got gifts because of his birthday? Because of his birth? When we actually looked in the scriptures, when the wise men found Jesus Christ, he was two year, between two and four years old. And when they went to give him gifts, they didn't give him gifts saying, today's your birthday. They weren't giving him gifts saying, hey, you were born. We're giving you gifts. Why did he get gifts when you actually read the scriptures? He got gifts because they were giving gifts to a king. He was a king. A, the star appeared saying the king was born. So they take that and say, he got gifts because he was, he was born. No. The star appeared when he was born, letting the wise men know that that day that the star appeared, a king was born. And from that day forward, they went to seek out a king. Not a birthday. A king. And they traveled a long way. It took them two to four years to find Jesus. And when they found him, they gave him gifts because he was a king. And as they gave them gifts, it's two-part. It's two-fold. They gave him gifts, and they fell on their knees and worshipped him. And when you hit these people out that are hardcore Christ, Christmas people, you say, are you, being, are you being a hypocrite, or are you going to stick to the Bible? If you're going to give people gifts, might as well be consistent, fall on your knees and worship them. That's what the wise men did. We do gifts because the wise men did it. They also fell on their knees and worshipped Jesus, the person they were giving the gifts to. So whoever you give gifts to, make sure you're following your knees. And it's not far from the truth, brothers and sisters of Christ. I had a man that was so hardcore about Christmas that there's nothing wrong with me, uh, my wife, my son, and I having a little fun. I do this for my son. The Bible's got their number. They are worshiping those people that they're giving gifts to because they're more giving gifts to those people and pleasing those people are more important than pleasing God. More important than fellowship with the brethren because they've caused so much division with Christmas. I did my part and said, hey, this is Christmas. It's bad. Threw it out. But I've never broken fellowship with somebody who celebrates Christmas. And I've had people that are hardcore Christmas people. I have to have Christmas. If you say something bad about Christmas, or prove, just prove, you don't have to say bad, just prove that Christmas is wrong, according to the scriptures, they break fellowship with you and kick you to the curb like you're nothing. Oh, I love you, brother. I'm praying for you, brother. And the next day, I hate you, brother. Oh, you're not even a brother. I hate you. You're a Satanist. Blah, 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 blah. What's going on there? They're lowercase g God. And it's not just Christmas, Trinity. The lowercase g gods of the Trinity. Is this the final authority? 
But it's just Christ. Keep hitting them up. Is this the final authority? Do you fear God? What's the Bible say? Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You want to know how to please God? You fear Him and you keep His commandments. That's how you please God. When they start turning on this book and start going the way of the world, what do we have to do? We have to put the fear of God back in them and remind them of God's commandments. And you know the number one commandment today? Okay, It's uh, obey the gospel. So what do I do when someone that I believe is saved has gotten so messed up? What do you do? You preach the gospel to them. You preach Jesus Christ to them. Yeah, but they're saved. doesn't matter. You, you remind them. But it says, Christ, we need to be reminding each other why we got saved, why we needed to get saved, who it is that saved us, and who it is you serve. Are you serving your flesh? Are you serving your wife or husband? Are you serving your children, your friends, your extended family, mothers, fathers, cousins, grandparents, aunts, uncles? Are you serving the world? When you get saved, who are you supposed to be serving? Jesus Christ. If you're a man that gets in ministry, you're supposed to be serving Jesus Christ, and who's the next step down on the list of who you're supposed to serve? The priorities. The brethren. The brethren come second. Are you being a good servant to the Lord first, and the brethren second? Some people's priorities are all messed up. It's world. The world comes second. Or the world, they start bumping up. Family. Friends, the world, start bumping up the list to the point where it's, if they say, well, God comes first, then my wife or husband. God comes first, then my children. And then after a while, you realize that that's a lie. Their wife and husband come first. Their children come first. The world comes first. Living your dream life comes first. And God's taking a back seat. Uh, the brethren, being a servant to the brethren in ministry, that's taking a back seat. That's what happens when you start getting messed up in the world. But brother, sister, and Christ, that can happen to any of us. Whether you're in ministry or not, where you start getting distracted by the world, and the world starts coming first. Then, and, but the point is that this is first. And the war that we're fighting right now is this is God's perfect written word. I thought we were fighting it pretty well. I thought we were winning and everything as far as, you know... The arguments died down, everything died down, but then recently the arguments started coming up again and people started hammering with the same old arguments. And that's what they'll do. They'll go quiet for a while, for a season, and then they'll come back hardcore with the same questions, preying on people's ignorance. People who say, oh, oh yeah, I love this King James Bible, it's God's perfect written word. Have you studied it though? The issue, the Bible version issue. Why would you believe? I don't care. I do care. I'm sorry. I do care that you believe it's the God's perfect written word. But have you actually studied the issue, the Bible version issue? I got books over here on the Bible version issue. Okay. I got a Texas Receptus. I have a book that predates the Nestle's Alon. That's based off the Nestle's Alon. Okay. And the reason I got these is for teaching purposes and learning purposes. And I've studied the Bible version issue. So when the lost world comes with all these questions, we're ready to give an answer. It's not enough just to say, I believe, have you studied the issue? I don't need to study the issue. So when the wolves in sheep's clothing, in sheep's clothing, weasel their way in, especially online, who's, who can tell who's saved and who's lost online these days? All they are is, all you get is words. Where's the deeds? Where's the action? You don't get to see any of that. It's just words. So when the wolf in sheep's clothing weasel their way in, they're going to start trying to get you to doubt this book and get you to turn on this book. And they're going to have some good words and fair speeches. Why? Because they, they're trying to deceive the hearts of the simple. What's a simple? Someone who sits there and goes, okay, I've been told this is God's perfect written word. That's it. I'm just going to believe it. That's someone who's simple. Okay, I've been told this is God's perfect written word. So I started looking into studies. What's the difference between all the different Bibles? Where do all the Bibles come from? This comes from the Textus Receptus, based off of over 99% of all Greek extant manuscripts. And all the other Bible versions come from the Nestle's Alon, that's based off of less than 1%. Less than 1%. Okay, it's like having a bar of gold. I have a bar of gold right here that's over 99% pure gold. All the other Bible versions, it's, it's, it's junk metal that's been painted gold. 
gold plated, just a such a such a thin layer, it's enough to try to deceive people. Okay? You do the study so that when someone comes along with good words and fair speeches, be gone. You're lying. Here's the answer. You're lying. Here's the answer. You're lying. That's not true. You have a straw man argument where you've already set up a fact. You say, this is a fact. So, because of this false fact, why do you do that? That's called a straw man argument. You don't set up a false fact. You don't set up any facts. You just ask the question, why this? Why that? It's always a straw man argument when you have someone who says, because there is no perfect written word of God today, why do you think... See, they started up a straw man argument. They've already made the statement, and in their head, a fact. There is no perfect written word. It's a straw man argument. They didn't come and say, why do you believe the King James Bible is perfect? Period. No straw man argument. Why? And you can present to them why I believe the King James Bible is perfect. I already gave some examples. But more importantly, in my life, I have never found a single error in here. Every error that someone attacks this book with has been answered. This book has no error. There are no mistakes in this book. Okay? This book, okay, has sa when I got saved, this book helped me live, truly live, according to God's Word. Well, because I have God's Word, but I'm talking about living a life of Christ. You have all these other people, oh yeah, I live a life of Christ. I can hold them to this book and say, uh, no, you don't. You're not living a life of Christ. You look, you're one of those re playing religion people. You like to play religion. You, know, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't have His perfect written Word because you reject His perfect written Word. And because this sees right through them. Oh, I'm living a life of Christ. And you look at them and they look like the world, act like the world, laughing at the world's jokes. There's all kinds of sin and wickedness in their life that they're justifying. Not going, oh, you're right, I'm wrong, I shouldn't do it. They're justifying it. They're trying to find loopholes where it's okay. And on and on and on and on. Right? But it's just Christ... What we're pushing, this ministry, what we've been pushing on lately is keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ because in these last days, that's what's going to be done. How do we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ? By keeping our head in this. Taking this and hiding it in our heart and living it. Keep preaching this. Keep teaching this. Keep reading this. Prayer. How do we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ? Prayer. Praying for one another and you having a strong prayer life. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Okay. So, um, that's, that'll be my prayer request for this month. Normally it's a long thing, okay? I fell and hurt my ankle. I was going to ask for prayer on that, but that's not what's important. Okay? That's not what's important at all. What's really important, brothers and sisters Christ, is that we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. It seems redundant, but that seems to be the number one prayer every month. Prayer request, prayer request, prayer request. Please, please, brothers and sisters Christ. Okay. I won't be doing a prayer request video. We'll use this as an update video and prayer request. Pray for the brethren that we're keeping this as our final authority. They're not getting distracted by the world, by family. Saved sisters in Christ, not getting distracted by your husbands. Husbands, saved brethren, brothers in Christ, not getting distracted by your wives. Not getting distracted by your children. Not getting distracted by your jobs. Not getting distracted by the world, your neighbors. Like I said, I'm, I'm helping out neighbors, and I need to not let the neighbors get in the way of me doing work for the Lord. And doing these videos, like I said, I'm, I'll put out the video after this, and you'll hear the dog whining in the background as I'm trying to study. So I'm doing some watching a dog. They haven't brought him over yet. So uh, I was able to get this study out first thing this morning because they didn't bring him over first thing like they said they would. So, But... Uh, I've been trying to help the neighbors out because the Bible says you're not to reward evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay? Done all to stand in the evil days. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil days. Yes, my neighbors are lost. Yes, they're on their way to hell. But we're still supposed to do good for them. And to have the, a door be a door for Be a light to show them the door and to be there when a door opens. You know how we say how a door opens? They want to talk. I've had neighbors wanting to talk about Jesus Christ. Why am I a King James Bible believer? I'm, I, for the most part, I haven't led any of them to Christ because a lot of them will just ask questions and then, yeah, and then they go back to their, their worldly life. But there are doors opening up. We are supposed to be there for the lost world and help them out. Okay, we're not supposed to be, you know, mean, mean men, you know, and just being jerks and everything to the lost world. There, no, 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 no. Okay, the Bible says in meekness, in meekness, for both saved and lost, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. 
You want someone to truly listen to you? Then you instruct them in meekness. You want to turn someone away and drive a wedge between you and someone else? Do it out of pride. Vind uh, vi being vindictive. Vengeance. Anger. Hate. Bitterness. That's how you drive a wedge between, between you and that person. Because you're not doing it God's way. And like I said, this ministry, one of the big things we've been pushing a lot lately, but it's crisis that we need to go back to doing things God's way. This way. We've been deceived over the centuries by traditions of men, church fathers. I'm not saying they're lost. I'm saying we've been deceived just as they were deceived by passing down things that aren't in the scriptures and we're doing things based off traditions of men and not according to the word of God. And when the traditions of men go against the word of God... This needs to come first. But they don't. there's brethren out there that I thought would put this first because they claim to be Bible believers, but they're not putting this first. They're putting the world first. They're putting culture, heritage, traditions of men, church fathers. They're putting all that first over the Word of God. They're putting things in this world that's going to come to pass. We go up. Nothing down here will last. Only what's done for Christ. Was it? All things will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Okay. Instead of putting the brethren, the, the, you know, putting this first, the brethren second, and servant, uh, being a servant to the brethren. I'm doing my best to be a servant to the brethren. Okay. True charity is self-sacrifice. Giving up anything in this world to serve God. Giving up anything in this world, including your time, to serve the brethren. Now be careful real quick. A little side note. If someone says, I sacrificed my day to be here with you, be careful who's saying it. There's some men that are saying that that get paid. They're getting paid. They didn't sacrifice their time. They're getting paid to do it. Be careful about that. But there are some men out there that will take time to preach the word. They'll take time to help a brother in Christ. They'll take time to talk to, to a brother in Christ on Skype or Messenger or phone. If you have a brother in the area, they'll take time out to come over and talk to you when you're down. That's charity. That's sacrificing their time. Not somebody who gets paid to be behind a camera or gets paid to stand behind a pulpit. Oh, I sacrificed my... T you prideful, pompous man, you. And it's going to destroy you. The Bible says pride goes before destruction. That pride's going to destroy you. And it has destroyed a lot of men that have that attitude. Oh, I sacrificed my time to be... No, you didn't. You get paid to do it. Right? True sacrificing your time has to do with going out of your way where you get nothing out of it. That's true charity. Okay? You can feel good about helping someone out. That's okay. That's not, that's still charity. But I'm talking about someone giving you money, someone giving you an incentive to help somebody out. Okay. Everybody else is watching you, so I better help this person out so I can look good in front of everybody else. You see what I'm saying? There's different motives behind it. But true charity is self sacrifice. You get nothing out of it. Okay? It's giving of yourself to help a brother and sister in Christ out. It's giving of yourself to help the lost world out. That's true charity. And the Bible says, if I have not charity, I am nothing. Charity, another thing about this is not being first. Someone said charity and liberty are the same thing. They're not. Okay, we're going to get into a study eventually about that. But liberty, just, uh, liberty is what Jesus Christ did. Charity is what you do. That's the easiest way to know they're not the same thing. They're different. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross, freeing us from the law of sin and death. That's what liberty is. Charity is what you do. You making self-sacrifices to serve God and to serve the brethren. Serve God in witnessing to the lost world, serve God in your own life, and to serve the brethren in your walk with the Lord. Charity is what you do. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did. And now they're trying to switch it around, saying liberty is what you do, and charity is what Jesus Christ did. What is the Bible? That's Satan's doing. What does the Bible say? If you have not charity, you are nothing. Satan wants you to be nothing. So he's perverting it. No, no, no. Don't fall for that, brother, says Christ. Liberty has nothing to do with what you are doing. It's not a choice. That's a lie. It's a lie from Satan. And their brethren, there's a lot of lost people, wolves in sheep's clothing, promoting it. But now their brethren getting on the Satan train, following the Satan train, and promoting that lie. That liberty is a choice. It's a choice. Oh no, liberty is what Jesus Christ did. He already made his choice. 
He chose to die for us, brothers of Christ. You need to have charity. Right? That's what you do. You have charity. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did. Sorry to rant. It's supposed to be a short video. I just want to say I'm trying to get some videos out, but I've been distracted by some things around here, mainly stuff that prevents me from recording if I have a lot of noise, like a dog that whines every 20 or 30 minutes. Um, going over to another house to house sit. I get to talk with the Lord. So I've got some good studies I want to bring out. Just been busy lately. So please forgive me, brother, sister Christ. I am trying to get back to focusing on what's important, the Word of God. So this next study that we're getting into is, it's going to be another words to no profit. Okay. Uh, Hugh, man. Okay, we're going to really get into that deeply because people just say, well, yeah, it's not in the Bible, so we're not going to use it. Yeah, but there's more to it than it just not being in the Bible. Usually when people are pushing, when the world, or even get into organized religion, when they start pushing terms and words that aren't in the Bible, there's a hidden meaning behind it, a wicked agenda, a satanic agenda behind it. When it doesn't, can't be found in here, it doesn't line up with here, when you actually do the research and study, it goes back to a very satanic and wicked agenda. And that's what we're going to be looking at. I'm also getting the last half of our... Um, Jesus, name above all names. Okay, And we're going to get that half done. And we're just going to keep going and get back to are you, um, are you looking? And get back to some more of the other doctrines that I want to get to, like the doctrine of liberty, uh, the doctrine of uh, witnessing, okay, the ministry of reconciliation, okay, uh, the doctrine of uh, eternal security. We're going to start getting into a lot more of that stuff because some of the brethren, like me, have gone through all these studies and we think we have it down. And we did. We did. Notice I said that past tense. We did. But when you go without studying these issues, even though you've studied them a million times, when you go, let's say, six months or a year without touching on any of the major doctrines or minor doctrines, you start, it starts drifting from your heart. You have it up here, but the reason we stay in it and we study it every day and we study it all the time and we keep reading this book is because we want to stay down here. It can be up here, but we want it to stay down here. And when it's not down here and it's just up here, what happens up here? We can get distracted by the world. We start to forget. When it's just up here, we start turning our backs on it. Like I had a brother in Christ. Never would turn his back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. It's the first step to the falling away to post and mid-trib. It takes your eyes off the imminent return of Jesus Christ and puts your eyes on the world and the time of Jacob's trouble. He would never do it, right? Well, he stopped putting it down here. It was just up here. And what did that brother end up doing? He ended up turning his back on it. What happens when it's just up here and not down here, brother says Christ? Satan comes in and through offering you the world, I think he offered that brother the world, and he's distracted by the world, living his dream life, and he turned his back on absolute truth. And Satan will do that to you, brother says Christ, if you're not keeping this here. And that's what my prayer is, and that's what this, hopefully this pushes out. Keep the Word of God here. Make sure you're staying in it. Make sure you're studying everything. Make sure you're reading this book every day. And make sure you're living it. Hide. That's why it says hide God's Word in your heart. Because if you don't hide it, guess what? Don't you remember the story about Jesus and the, um, the seeds that fell by the wayside? What happens? Satan comes by and snatches it up. Snatches the Word up. So why do we hide God's Word in our heart? So it doesn't get snatched up. When people don't hide God's word in their heart and it's just up here, guess what happens? Satan comes by and snatches it up. Because you're not hiding it down here. I've seen so many people start out strong, newly saved, start out strong, and then they fall to the wayside. Why? Because it's up here, it's not down here. I see a lot of false converts that definitely fall apart really fast. Because it's all up here. But I'm talking about brethren, there's some brethren I believe get saved. They have a, such a love for God's Word, and it starts out down here, but after a while, oh, I've learned it all. I've learned everything I need to learn. I'm good. What happens? It all comes back up to here, and Satan comes by, snatches away with good words and fair speeches. Oh, is that really true? That thing you've always been standing for, is that really true? Oh, what about this? What about... And gets you to turn your back. And we're in the falling away, and that's what I believe is going on. Brothers says Christ, they're brethren, and they're falling away. They're falling away. And it breaks my heart, brother says Christ, because I'm trying to help them. There's, have you ever tried to? Have you ever tried to help someone that doesn't want help? 
I think all of a lot of us have that testimony. But it's Christ that you try to help people and they don't want help. You heard that saying, you can lead, into, lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can't save somebody who doesn't want to be saved. You can't help somebody who doesn't want help. We're still supposed to preach the gospel. I'm going to keep preaching the gospel. But lately with brethren, it's like the brethren are turning on each other. Brethren are going their separate ways. There's brethren that I pray for all the time. I used to fellowship with and had a brother and his wife and two sons up in Canada. There was another brother in Christ up in Canada um, that disappeared. I've had couples that would talk to me and they've disappeared. Um, some just, they'll either disappear, some have just turned on me and become just so evil. It's not that, hey, I can't follow, this is, I haven't had someone turn on me like this. Listen, I believe you're wrong according to the word of God and the direction that you're going. I just can't go that way, brother. You're going the wrong direction. I can't go that way, so I'm going to have to part ways with you. You're, see how that's, that's love and meekness and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. It's always been, you're lost, you're a fake, you're a fraud, you're a heretic, you're a servant of Satan. It goes from, I love you, brother, I'm praying for you, brother, I'm here for you, brother, you're right on, brother, I'm, I'm standing by the word of God and we're standing together, brother. I want you standing for me, I want you standing for this right here. Okay, and if I line up with this, then we are standing together because we're lined up with this. All right? And I granted, if I'm not lining up with this, you need to stand for this and we won't be standing together. And if you're standing for what's right, praise the Lord. If I'm not, pray, ask God to get me back on the right path. But they go from that attitude to just flat out, I hate your brother. You're, what, you wait a minute, you're not even a brother. You're just a servant of Satan. You're fake. You're a fraud. I'm going to stay away from that man or he'll mess you up. And the person who's saying that is the one messing people up. Taking their eye, you know, some of you know who that is. Taking their eyes off Jesus Christ. He's really messing people up. He's really messing up the body of Christ. But what he'll do is if anybody comes up and questions him, he'll come back with, stay away from that man, he'll mess you up. Stay away from that man, he'll Stay away from everyone but me. I'm the only one that has the truth. And I have that people coming and just, Brother Jesus Christ, I'm trying, and I'm going to keep trying, but in these last days, it's going to be very hard. Right? Good story to read on that, and then we'll end this real quick, so I didn't mean for this to go so long. A good story on that, read about Jeremiah. Read about, uh, I'm trying to remember if it was Jeremiah or Isaiah. But read both of those. Read one of them, I, I, sometimes I get them confused. But one of them, uh, he was preaching the word of God, and nobody would listen. He was thrown into a well, I think that was Jeremiah, was thrown into a well where it had mud coming up almost to his knees. And they left him down there to die. And there was a eunuch that would heed his words and uh, beg the king to let him out. And they let him out eventually. So he reached a couple people, but when you look at his whole life, he reached two or three people when he was alive. And then you go to the book of Daniel, and Daniel's reading, I think it's Jeremiah, Hope I'm right on this. It's Jeremiah or Isaiah. But he's reading Jeremiah, and he heeds Jeremiah's warnings and learns from Jeremiah. Him uh, and the three guys that are with him, uh, my name, the names uh, Abednego, Meshach, and Abednego, and I forget the third name sometimes. But he had seven people. Let's say seven people that listened to him in his whole lifetime. Everybody else would yell at him, call him names. <sighs> berate him, belittle him, ignore him, physically harm him. Nobody would listen to him. But this is Christ. I believe we're getting closer and closer to those last days. Online, you don't, there's no telling if they're actually listening to you. But I have some brethren that will contact me through emails and Skype that we talk. And it's like, okay, they're really listening to what I'm saying when it comes to the Word of God. They're listening to the Word of God. Okay. And you can see that they're actually listening. But... Where it's almost like some days it feels like, I know we're not quite there yet, but it does feel like it some days. Like, I'm, like, like we're Jeremiah. You feel like Jeremiah, I feel like Jeremiah, where we're trying to do God's work on, like everybody around you, trying to witness for Jesus Christ, and nobody will listen to you around you. Your family members aren't listening to you. Nobody will listen to you. But you keep preaching it. Jeremiah keep pre kept, kept preaching what God told him to preach. Go do this. Jeremiah would do that. Go do that. 
Right? We still keep preaching the gospel, no matter what. We keep standing for this book, no matter what. But in these last days, it just seems like... So, brothers and sisters of Christ, I'm sorry. I've been busy lately. Uh, going into wintertime, and uh, like I said, house sitting right now, what's been preventing me, get, I was going to put out a few videos and try it. I was able to get one out, or one done, and I'll get it out. Uh, but the dog whining every two seconds, and uh, some of the noise that's been going on around here makes it harder, even inside. But we'll be getting out Bible studies, because we're going to keep at it. Like Jeremiah, we're just going to keep at it. All right? We're going to keep serving the Lord no matter what. So, brothers and sisters Christ, please pray for me. I will pray for you. Uh, don't forget that the ministry has an email. I'll put it in the uh, comment section. Um, has an email, has a P.O. box. You can send letters. Uh, sometimes I get packages. I have a package down there still from a brother in Christ sent me a package in the past. Um, but mainly I have Skype. Email me. We'll get connected on Skype or uh, Facebook Messenger. I almost want to quit Facebook now. I really do. It's a whole other issue. But I'm still t t still on Facebook, and uh, um, so using the messenger on there to video chat and, and, and talk and everything is still available for right now. Um, that's all still there, Brother Sister Christ. We need fellowship. We need some good fellowship. We need to start getting back into fellowship and not is purposely isolating ourselves. Okay, we need to get back to exhorting the brethren. So I'm going to end this with this. The Bible says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort. We need, to be, we need good fellowship to exhort the brethren. Exhort with all long suffering. You feel like you're the only one in your area standing for God, standing for his word. Long suffering and doctrine. Right. And remember, the number one doctrine in the Bible for us today is what? The gospel. Don't forget who it is you served, why you got saved, and who it is that saved you. Don't forget it, brothers and sisters Christ. Don't let the world get you to forget it. Don't get, let your flesh forget, get you to forget it. Don't let uh, respect our persons, you idolizing some man behind a pulpit or some man behind the camera. Don't let them make you forget why you got saved and who it is that saved you. Don't forget. Fight, 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 brothers and sisters Christ. We are in a war especially in these last days, but we are in a spiritual war, spiritual battle. We're fighting, 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 done all to stand. The Bible keeps telling us, don't faint, don't falter. Stand, stand, stand. That's what my exhortation today is. Stand, stand, stand. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you in the next video.